respect you for it. You want to, you, you can do, you're free American like anything you want. If you want to be uncivil and rude and ungentlemanly, that's up to you. But don't expect the rest well, of us to say, oh, well, in you're there, Mr. Gergen. I'm sorry, nobody says policy in there. We try to be gentlemen, and obviously, you don't belong there. Weaving spiders coming out here? <laughs> yeah, that is a three pointer. Woo! <laughs> Boy, I hit the hot button. Mr. Gergen, have a wonderful life. Say hi to Moloch for me. Canaanite deity, and I'll see you at Eyes Wide Shut, baby. Bye-bye. Get his face. Get his face. Get his face. Get his face. Get in there and get his face. David Gergen. David Gergen says that we're angry? The real wild card here are the demonstrators. We just don't know where this is going to go. There's a, while they were peaceful today, there's a lot more anger among those demonstrators than... Is evident. You talk to them today, they're pretty angry people. So that's a big wild card. Thank you, you and goodbye. The ritual? That's none of your damn business. It's none of your damn business. Oh, that's right. Listen, oh. listen. Just look at him. That's a face keeping a lot of secrets. He's got some stories to tell. And remember that Washington Times article? It talked about all the other organizations that he resigned from. It mentions the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations. All of them groups dedicated to setting up a world government and destroying American sovereignty. You're looking at video that I personally shot during the cremation of care ritual held at Bohemian Grove. My documentary film, Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove, details how world leaders from across the planet meet every July and actually engage in mock human sacrifices to the Canaanite deity Moloch they bring a bound body in an effigy of a child and sacrifice it to the idol. And incredibly, most of those in attendance are our supposed Christian conservative leaders. Here's a video still I shot while I was inside of the encampment. You see a human skull in effigy. And let's look at that deity they worship, Molech, a Semitic deity mentioned in the Bible whose worship was marked by the human sacrifice of children. Since we blew their cover in 2000, the Grove's gone public to a certain extent. They released this photo of a 1915 ritual. Here you have the hooded figure over the mock sacrifice. And here's a simulated hanging from 1908. In this picture you see a photo from 1909 with what looks like public officials in attendance. A black boy is tied down to some type of table and around him we see people in strange garb. I'll leave it to you to figure out what they're doing. In 2004 the Grove released this photo from 1934 of members in hoods. The Canaanite deity Moloch was worshipped in Greece, Babylon and then later in Europe. It is normally symbolized by a bull or an owl or some type of horned beast and children are sacrificed to it. It is the precursor of all modern death cults. I was able to get out of the cult compound with this program cover from the cremation of care. And right on the front, where a child would be burned, they had photoshopped in the image of a skeleton burning in the flames. What purpose does this all serve, having world leaders congregate and engage in an ancient Canaanite ritual of mock child sacrifice? It's a way of binding them together, whether it's George Herbert Walker Bush or Henry Kissinger or Ronald Reagan or Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, who's been a member since 1984. It's about bringing them together. Nowhere is the origin of the cult more in evidence than in former German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt's own autobiography, Men and Powers, a political retrospective. He talks about how they have their own German groves where they do these rituals, these quote druidic rituals. But he says his favorite place to do the rituals is at Bohemian Grove. This is a book that you can get at the library written by him. He talks about the Trilateral Commission, the CFR, the Bilderberg Group, and world government. And he says that much of the decisions are made at the Bohemian Grove. We were able to obtain the internal annals of the Bohemian Grove from 1987 to 1996, a publication only given to members. And in it we see pictures of George W. Bush and his father, Newt Gingrich. We see all of these different famous individuals 
there at the Grove, Walter Cronkite, Jimmy Carter, Jack Kemp, Richard Milhouse Nixon. The list goes on and on. If you're still doubting reality, here is a November 1989 issue of Spy Magazine. The Grove released photos of themselves dancing around dressed like women. And in the article, they admit that they do mock human sacrifices. The article went on to show artists' renditions of the Moloch idol, as well as discussing how they bust in male prostitutes and how AIDS was a big problem. Then a New York Post article in July of 2004 reported how a top gay porn star serviced the moguls at the Bohemian Grove. This 1914 Bohemian Grove annal has a swastika on its cover, and inside it talks about how they're a German death cult founded by the Illuminati. But some of you are saying, wait a minute, the Nazis invented the swastika. That was their symbol. You're talking about 1914 and 1920. My friends, the swastika was used by the Buddhists, it was used by Native Americans. It is a sun symbol, and it was used by Druids in Europe thousands of years ago. In the 1920s and 30s in the U.S., it was a symbol of good luck, like a horseshoe. But for the Nazis and members of the Bohemian Grove, it was a symbol of power. And Adolf Hitler was obsessed with the occult. The roots of Nazi Germany grew out of groups like the Thule and Thule Society, organizations obsessed with black magic, which themselves sprung from older organizations like the Illuminati. All of these groups corresponded and called themselves Orders of the Death's Head. Adolf Hitler was a member of the Thule Society. Here you see one of their publication covers from 1919. He took their symbol as the signet of his party. It has been reported that after Madame Blavatsky died, Aleister Crowley became the head of the German Illuminati, also known as the OTO. Aleister Crowley was called the most evil man alive because of the bloodthirsty rituals he engaged in. It's important to note that both of his children died in questionable circumstances. So should we be surprised that the leader of the Third Reich, who killed millions of people, was an adherent of both of these sickening individuals? The Waffen-SS were the henchmen of the Nazi party, and they wore an aluminum or silver death's head on their hats. Here you have a famous field marshal of World War I, and adorning his headdress is a death's head. In reality, all of Hitler's actions were nothing more than a manifestation of the deepest and darkest dreams of the Order of Death. And remember that the Order of Skull and Bones of Bohemian Grove are nothing more than offshoots of this global movement. The Nazis wore a skull and crossbones on their hats. Compare that to the skull and bones symbol. And beneath that, an early Nazi party medal not just with a swastika, but the 32 or 322 of Skull and Bones. We see these symbols throughout Nazi culture, especially on their icons and standards. Hitler believed that they drew power from these symbols, and he publicly talked about it. Here is an official photo taken from the Presidential Library of George Herbert Walker Bush showing him standing with his classmates. And there it is, the Order of Death symbol skull and crossbones with 322 beneath it. Would it surprise you to know that one of the chief members of Bohemian Grove, Thomas Watson, was also an adherent of Adolf Hitler's ideology and that international business machines were integral in controlling the death camps? IBM was absolutely essential in assisting Hitler in numbering and exterminating the Jews and other undesirables. The famous tattoos on Jews' arms were international business machine numbers that were entered into the computers. The computers would then decide how long to keep someone alive and how hard they could be worked according to height and body weight as well as age. Here's a photo of Mr. Watson with Adolf Hitler in the late 1930s. It's not a coincidence that today, IBM is the backbone of national ID card technology in the United States and across the world. Ford and General Motors were also involved in the Nazi war machine.